Now, the reason I'm asking you that is that step number one in the adventure guide is very simple, straightforward. Clarify the promise and the who, which is the try. And that is get your promise and your positioning nailed. And remember, there's only two reasons why a mastermind does not succeed. And the first of which is the promise and the positioning is not aligned. The people you're trying to sell that promise to, they don't care. Or the promise isn't compelling enough to get someone to care. So that's reason number one. Now that's the first step. If you do not have your promise absolutely nailed, and by the way, I'll give you a little hint. We've got something called, um, We've got something called a filtering script, which is going to come a little later in our uh, in our series here. If you don't have that nailed, if you do the filtering script, you'll get it. You'll at least be able to have a conversation about it. So that's step number one. Now I'm going to give you a little hint. You know your positioning and your promise are on track when this happens. You're talking to somebody in your ideal market, somebody who this is actually designed for. And as you're having this communication about it, and you'll use the filtering script, which I'll give you later on, um, as that's happening, here's what they do. They go, huh? Tell me a little bit more. And honest to goodness, you can do more market research watching for the lean in than any other single thing under the sun. Your promise and your positioning is on when you get the lean in. If you're not getting the lean in, people go, oh, that's really nice for you. Rock on. I wish you the best. That means politely, sounds whatever, but they don't really give a shit. That's the, frankly, the stray of goods. But when you get the lean in, that's when you know you have it nailed. And by the way, I cannot tell you how many times, um, and I know I'm going long on, on, on <laughs> promise and positioning, but it's where most people screw it up. Okay? So here's, here's this next piece about the, the lean in. Um, there's really no nice way of saying this, so I'm just going to spit the thing out. If you continue to talk about something and you're not getting the lean in and you're not getting that whole piece, for crying out loud, change it up. Because people spend, it seems like, hours, days, weeks, months for crying out loud in courses, in Facebook groups, saying, hey, what do you think of this promise and positioning? Hey, what do you think? If they're not the people that it's targeted at, they don't know and their feedback is meaningless, utterly and completely meaningless. They don't have the right to have an opinion because they're not the tribe. If they are exactly your tribe, then they could have an opinion about it. But up until that point, ignore them. It doesn't mean shit. Go talk to the people that you'd like to sell it to. Does that make sense, gang? I put my hand up because I'm used to being in the classroom for, for it's like, say yes if it means sense to you. Um, and if you're, at, if you're back in your office, just put your hand up if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is this, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, is that be their leader. Because the second reason why masterminds fail to launch is that you might have the promise and position lined up, but the tribe goes, look, you're not our leader. You don't have the results, you don't have the influence, you don't have, you don't have the respect of this particular tribe. And if that's true, then you may need to take a couple of steps back in terms of adjusting the promise and the positioning for a tribe that does see you as their leader, or you may need to invest a bunch of time, effort, and energy in creating influence with the tribe that you want to lead. But honest to goodness, I have to tell you this because it drives me a little bit on the crazy side. Um, over the last couple of years, <laughs> it's actually become fun over a little, over, over time. Uh, and this could be in one of our Launch Mastermind 90 Bootcamp. This could be in um, this could be in Mastermind 2 Millions Live. Uh, hell, this could be in our Facebook group. But somebody will come up with their promise and their position. And say, I, it's fantastic. I've got this nail. I did all the work. And what I know what I want to do is I want to lead a tribe of elite entrepreneurs. Kind of like your Vita program. And I'm, I, I am totally going to knock it out of the park. And we're going to travel the world. And I'm going to lead this group of multi-millionaires who are, who are going to like change the world in their business. I can't wait to serve and support that community. Then there's a little pause and it sounds a little bit like, but you know, um, damn, you know, I, I was just hoping that maybe you could tell me like where I could find some of those folks. <laughs> and my response is this, it's like, <laughs> what do you mean find them? Do you anticipate that there's somewhere, somehow a group of millionaires looking for a mastermind that are hiding behind the bushes that are just waiting for you to, you know, peek through and say, hey, you want to join my mastermind? What the hell do you mean? Where do I find them? Here's a hint. If the people you're talking about are not in your freaking phone, you are not their leader. If you can't text them and say hello, you're smoking crack. It's crazy. It drives me insane. So if you do not have an existing relationship in some way, shape, or form with them, here's a hint. You're not their fucking leader. 
I trust that that makes sense to you. It's not rocket science. Good God, folks. Anyway, that one gets me, as you might be able to tell. And by the way, I'm from Saskatchewan, and I swear I don't swear that often, but that, good Lord, that's a ridiculous question. Where am I going to find my tribe? Then here's a hint. They're not your tribe. Number three, clarify your business model. And um, a couple of days ago, I gave a couple of case studies about uh, masterminds and where they fit. I gave an example of at the low end, $97, the mid range at the $497, and the high end at the $25,000 to $30,000 a year. And I want you to understand this because lots of people get all excited. It's like, oh, I'm going to run a premium mastermind and I'm going to run it for a bunch of millionaires as soon as I can find them hiding behind the bushes. Um, again, that's a little bit on the silly side. You can do incredibly well in your business with a low end mastermind, like down at the $97 piece you can actually make a substantial difference. As long as you have back-end offerings that can leverage and monetize the relationship and the intimacy and influence that you create in the mastermind at 97 bucks a month. Nothing wrong with that at all. And there's a ton of variations to this. So here's my point to this, is you need to make a strategic decision about where you're going to place your mastermind on your business model. Is it going to be a low-end intro process? Is it going to be a mid-range process that's going to apply, going to really focus on application integration? Is it going to be a high-level and expensive strategic model? No good, no bad, no right, no wrong. You just have to have it in alignment with the purpose, in alignment with the positioning of who it is that you want to serve, that whatever the price tag, you're going to be able to deliver 10x the value and your business model has to be structured that you can leverage each and every one of those steps along the way. So I trust that makes sense, but you have got to make that decision wisely because I've seen people muck it up time and again, which is like, oh, I'm just going to do a high level mastermind and I'm going to stop everything else. Well, how the hell do you think people are going to come find out about your high level mastermind if you're not doing something else? Or it's like, I'm just going to do a one mastermind because I want to be able to reach everybody, but they don't have any follow up offers that actually make that make sense. Now, in our Launch Your Mastermind 90 Day Bootcamp, um, I've got to tell you, there is, su there is an entire bonus module on business models that work. And in my humble opinion, even if you didn't do anything, anything in the Mastermind domain, if you truly began to understand what a business model is and how you design yours, game changing for 2018 for you. Number four. Um, now, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I'm foreshadowing to material we're going to do later in the Mastermind Jumpstart. And it is this. It is... Number four is fill your WCC funnel. Now, by the way, hey Karen, good to see you again. Hey Steven, Jason. Okay, a couple things. Real quick, um, for those of you who are new here, uh, what I want you to do is this. If you want the resource, which is the adventure guide, make sure that you type in the word master in the comments below. That's going to get you the adventure guide. That's going to get you the updated uh, mastermind mentors manual. I know many of you already have that because I saw, I've seen you on previous uh, um, videos in our series, but you still need to do it to get this part here, which is valuable. Jumping ahead, fill your WCC funnel. Now, here's the beautiful part about masterminds. And I really, really, really um, appreciate this, which is you don't need 10,000 people to do stunningly well in masterminds. You need a group of eight to 12 to, who say yes to you, which might mean, you know, depending upon your influence and all those sort of things, which might mean, mean you need a pool of 40 to 50 people. So we do this thing. Uh, you're gonna get a manual for it in, I guess, three or four days. That manual is called Fill Your Masterminds With Ease. Now we have an internal code name for that manual, which is WCCs, which stands for Wine, Conversations, and Cash. Now, the cash part is a bit of a misnomer in that um, we never sell anything at those things. They are relationship building and contribution pieces as well. Um, Jason, that, that is absolutely a, a great, I'm gonna put that up for everybody to see because I totally agree. Um, that WCC piece is a way to build relationships. Now, we call it wine conversation and cash because the crazy thing is, is every single time we do them, exceptional sales happen, like exceptional. Like I think the worst one that we have ever done, 30 days after the event, we did $60,000, okay? So exceptional. So we call them wine conversation cash. And in a nutshell, all they are is a hyper-targeted mini mastermind that you hold at your home or in a restaurant that we step you through the exact questions to ask, all the rest of it. And the idea is to build, take us going, you know, the steps we talked about earlier. There is, of course, awareness, relationship, intimacy, influence. And all the WCC does is take people who are at a relationship stage and move them up the ladder to influence. And then if we want to do business with them, we do business with them, which will come further. But you've got to start filling that funnel. You've got to identify who would I like in my masterminds? Who do I want to build greater relationships with? Who do I want to make huge deposits in contribution to them? 
So that is number four, begin to fill your funnel. Number five, create your personal invitation process and send it out. Now here's a hint to this. And by the way, all of this is in the manual. There's an example link where you can see, I actually use a little landing page, but here's the honest goodness truth. The invitation process happens, having this crazy thing called a conversation. We phone people and we talk to them and we say, hey, um, I will use text, I'll use Facebook Messenger, but it is personal. This is not something that you do an email blast on. That, that, is, that doesn't fulfill what we're talking about here. And um, I'm gonna hide that, I'll put my name back up for those of you who don't know. And um, in that process, when you are creating your invitation, you do not want it to businessy. You want it to be fun. You want it to be personal. Um, you know, frankly, these whole uh, these whole series of of um, videos that we're doing, you can tell that I'm not particularly formal in this. I'm wearing my Christmas cap. I'm wearing my day-to-day -day blue jeans and my shirt. Um, I haven't even gone and put on a collar shirt for you guys. I don't think. Um, and part of the reason is, is I want you to see me. I want you to recognize this is how it is. And the same thing holds true when you're doing the invitations for your WCC. You do not want it to be too formal. You want them to want to come to build a relationship with you. So you get that process done and the more personal, the better in terms of your invitation. Now, the next is you master the filter and follow-up process. Now, I want to be really clear about this is that in mastering the, the, the filtering and the follow-up process is that let's imagine, for example, that um, number one, you've set your date for your WCC, your Wine Conversation Cash. Number two, you've begun to do some of those invitations. You've begun to have a couple of the, the chit chats between uh, people who've said that they're interested and want to attend and don't want to attend. And, and I want to be very clear about this. The big picture of a WCC is for you to begin to see how people show up in masterminds. Are they givers? Are they takers? Are they uh, self-righteous? Are they uh, down to earth? Are they, um, how do I put this? Are they present? You know, in today's distracted world, um, lots of people are not present. They're not physically in their bodies for those things. So the whole part of this whole process is I'm starting to filter who I'm interested in possibly building a relationship to work with. Please hear this, not at the event itself, but in the very interactions with the people that I invite. And I'll just give you a brief example. So there's a woman who actually runs a, an international organization. Um, we've sort of been crossing paths. A couple of people said a bunch of times to me, oh, you should spend more time with her, all the rest. I was like, yeah, well, whatever. So I invited her to a WCC. And um, she replied back with what I deemed to be, the first time I was like, sure, a, a whole bunch of questions. It was like, I was like, fine. So I answered a couple of them and we went back and forth. And finally it was like, by the second email, I was like, I don't want to have her here. By the third email, I was like, no, I'm totally done. Um, and I dismissed it long before anything else ever happened. I have not invited her again. I won't invite her again. Her approach and how she showed up in the invitation process was enough for me to clearly determine I did not want to work with her. So I trust that makes some sense to you. Now, number seven, honing facilitator skills. There is an art form to running masterminds and the most significant part of that art form is facilitation. How to manage a small group of people so that we, number one, create safe space. Number two, we create authenticity and intimacy. Number three, we have fun. Number four, there is value. And honest to goodness, you know, running personal transformation experiential programs for 30 years, um, that is, you know, driving force of that is great facilitating skills. So we are pretty darn good at this. But it, the manual that you're gonna get for the WCC, that process teaches you some of the key pieces to look out for. Um, so you want, and, and the reason I put your, um, where to you go Jason, there we go, I'm gonna put your quote up again. Um, I'm not leading them, I'm just in front of them. Um, I love that particular quote because it really speaks to this idea of when you're running a WCC is that you want to be with them, not ahead of them or superior to them or any of those sorts of things. So one of the key pieces to this is how do you facilitate the meeting so that you are still with them, but making sure that the tone is set properly for a collaborative experience. And uh, we teach a bunch of things. And I'll just give you one little hint is that Everyone gets the, an equal opportunity to uh, answer a series of questions that we set up in the, in the manual. 
and then the rest of the group gets to actually find out a little bit more about the people, offer some uh, suggestions, resources, you know, contribute in some way, shape, or form. But instead of the person running the meeting saying, okay, thank you, Bob, your time's up, now we're gonna ask, instead of doing that, you just set the alarm on the phone and set it down, and the phone does that process. Now, please hear this. That sounds like a little detail, but what it does is it keeps you more with them then separate from them. And we go through a variety of tips and tools about how to go about that so that it genuinely works. All right. And I'm just gonna check uh, questions and comments here for a brief moment if And by the way, for anyone who is new joining us, I'm just gonna remind you again, if you want the, uh, the Mastermind Adventure Guide, gotta get that from the camera, uh, you need to just type the word in master in the comments below, and that's gonna take care of that. By the way, if you are watching this video on a page that it has been shared to, here's a hint, you have gotta click right on the video, take, it, it takes you back to the original location where uh, the video was posted, because that's the only place where typing in the master thing works, okay? So it, you have to click on the video, take it back to its original posting, and then that, uh, that Facebook Messenger piece will work out for you. Um, Chris, surely to have a successful mastermind, sometimes there are people that you originally think will be a good fit, but turn out not so much. Is there a neat way of selecting and filtering? So Chris, the answer to that question is God, yes. Um, it is not the prime focus of today's topic, but here's, here's the big thing, is that the application process, it, well, just let me back this up. The reason I'm a fan of the WCCs is people show their colors early. Okay, so use a WCC just to spend some time with them and see how they play with other people. That's a monumental piece. We use a very in-depth application. Um, depending on the price point of your mastermind, uh, we've got them as, as simple as one pagers all the way up to nine page colonoscopies, <laughs> depending on the commitment and the engagement. And uh, then we also do personal interviews. So, so those are all of the ways to go through this. But the key piece I can tell you is this, is that if they get through all of those elements, and they are causing difficulties in the mastermind, then as a mastermind leader, you need to act and remove them. Um, by the way, there's an entire section in the mastermind mentors manual that you will get uh, complimentary about removing a member. So uh, just go through that entire process because there's an entire, um, how do I put it, sequence of events that is necessary for that to happen cleanly. Okay. Yeah, Jason, yeah. You, I love technology, but you're right. You're never gonna get the same degree of personal connection that you get um, when you're face to face, heart to heart, and belly to belly. All right, gang. Where did we leave off? Facilitation skills. And by the way, if you're concerned about, I haven't run a mastermind yet, and I want to hone my facilitation skills. What we say to people who are in our launch your mastermind 90 day bootcamp and at Mastermind Two Millions Live doing all this work is plan on doing five WCCs. And if you do five well positioned WCCs, your confidence in your facilitating skills and the interest and the engagement and the connection to other people, you will be well positioned to get your mastermind up and running. By the way, I've had people get their mastermind up and running in as little as one, seriously, one WCC. And I know people that has taken seven or eight. But on average, if you plan to do five and you do them well and they are well targeted, your mastermind's up and running. Okay, so that's number seven. We're moving on to number eight. And I've already said this, but uh, let me just say it again, is hosting your WCCs. It's honest to goodness gang, anyone who's in this realm and wants to do well in this realm, there is one answer to building your mastermind business. Host WCCs. And then somebody else, on the assumption that you've got your positioning and all the other steps done, let me be clear about this. <laughs> but you get to that spot, and then it is WCC, 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 WCC. And then I will say to people, it's like, I'm having a little trouble. And I will say, how many WCCs did you do? And they'll say three. I said, I told you it's a minimum of five, okay? So this is one of those elements where the pathway is clear. You simply need to walk on the path, okay? This is not the time to go on the adventure through the trees. This is the time to fill that room, build those relationships, and make meaningful contributions to everybody who shows up. Um, now, I wanna be clear about this. Still working through it, but love the updated manual. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear that, Shannon. Um, yes, uh, you know, it's funny, it's funny you say it, I should just address this. For those of you that have the old manual, we had lots of debate around the organization about, you know, should we have, um, should we have updated that earlier? And I, I took the stand that it's like, you know what, when I say to people, you get the actual manual that I used, because I didn't want people to think that, you know, we just jumped on the bandwagon. 
But when we say you get the actual manual, so that's one of the reasons we left it for a long while, but it's like, it, it was, an update was necessary. So I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you like it, Shannon, and I'm uh, good for you for getting through it. Okay, now, just imagine with me, and I know there are people on this call here who have actually led uh, WCCs, and I know for some of you it's like, what the hell is a WCC again? Wine Conversation with Cash, a little mini mastermind event that we use to build relationships, contribute value, and create value. Now, I'm looking right from the moment I invite someone all the way through to the moment where they leave my home and I give them a hug at my door and I say, thank you for attending. I am watching to see if I think, number one, they are fit, number two, if they're ready, number three, if I want them in my mastermind. Now, by the way, I should make this very, in, very important point. I have a variety of brands, I have a variety of programs, I have workshops, I have online programs, I have masterminds, I've got this sort of, you know, if, if you do this for 30 years, you'll have it too. Um, and I'm not looking for, it's like, oh my God, Bob needs to be in this mastermind. I'm looking for what can I, what's my best way to serve them? What's the best way to support them? So when I say there's a fit and I'm watching for what that fit is all the way through, and if there's not a fit, that's totally fine too, but I'm watching for what that fit is. If there is somebody who is like perfect for the mastermind, um, I will, and, and that night, absolutely no sales, nothing, even, I've even had people try and give me a credit card there and it's like, no. Um, but the next day, I will pick up the phone or I will give them a quick text and I'll say, hey, thank you so much for coming. Um, if I offered them any sort of resources and support in any way, shape, form, like a copy of my book or a complimentary ticket to a live event or some version there, but if I've done that, I will deliver on whatever it is I said that I would do. That's number one. Then, number two, I will say, hey, and this is where the filtering script comes into play. Hey, I think that you might be a perfect fit for my mastermind. And that might be lead, you know, accelerate your influence and your incomes. Um, that might be momentum, getting the foundation of your business stuff built. That might be uh, the seven figure business breakthrough, whatever it is, but I'll be very specific. Um, you might be a great match for this. Um, what I can tell you for sure is that that community of people will accelerate exactly the goals that you said you were working on in a powerful, meaningful way. Would you be interested in having a conversation to find out more? Now, please understand this. I get agreement. I'm not pitching, I'm not selling, I'm not sending an application without agreement. Are you interested in having a further conversation to find out more? It is very express, and if they say yes, it's like, great. Then let's set up Skype, let's have lunch, let's go for a glass of, a glass of wine, let's go for a coffee, whatever it is. And then in that meeting, I am doing everything I can to connect the dots about why that person is a good match, if I believe that they are. I'm doing everything in my power to continue to vet and make sure that my match and my assumption is correct. And only then, at the end of that meeting, I would say something like this. And this, by the way, obviously is number nine. It says, send out applications, but it, that isn't like willy-nilly. I would say, I actually think you'd be a fantastic fit. Um, I think that the group would love having you there, and I think you would love being in the group. There's one last formal step, which is the application process. Are you interested in participating? And they say, yes, great, here's the application. Can you please have that application back to me in the next 24 or 48 hours? You never give an application without an agreement about when it comes back, in the next 24 to 48 hours. You hand it off, you say, great, I feel great, really great about this, we'll review the application, make sure that it works. Um, that is step number nine. Step number 10 is the application comes back. You review, review the application, you do a final interview, and if they are a fit and all is good on both sides, you simply say, and how would you like to pay? That's it. Now, I know that our, our training went a little bit longer today, um, but this is an awful lot to cover in terms of the overview. But honest to goodness game, if you print this out, number one, get it by typing in master down there. Type it out and work your way through the process. Ideally, you know, there's a, every single one of these 10 steps. Uh, we have about 15 videos uh, in the contract section or the uh, application section. I think we have six different applications. Uh, we can help with each and every one of those steps, but print this out, put it beside the wall, and only focus on your next step. Do not let yourself get out of sequence on these pieces. If you do it in this order, five WCCs, my friends, a mastermind is damn near inevitable. And might it take a little more than five? Yes, but on average, five does the trick. All right, my friends. Chris says, ah, you were answering my question. I have no idea what the question was, but Yahoo. <laughs> um, Chris, this is a great question. Chris was, I'm gonna put this up here, show. Um, have I ever considered any sort of psychometric testing, DISC, Belbin, in the selection process? 
Um, so I love that question, and I really think that a a broad a broad base of profiles makes for a more powerful mastermind group. So for years, I have used uh, both in our live events and those sorts of things. I've used something called social styles, which is a um, how do I put that? It's a much simplified version of DISC. And uh, so I use it, um, how do I put it, I almost unconsciously competently. So I'm always looking for, you know, have we got a balance of the four primary styles? How are they going to fit together? Are they mature? Are they immature? All those pieces. So formalizing that through DISC, I think is a brilliant idea. And by the way, it can be a great value add at the beginning of the application process to saying, hey, and what we gotta make sure of is that you have a profile that's gonna be complimentary to the rest of the group. So that's that's all good. And um, we have never sort of formally done that as part of the application process, but I informally do it every single time. It's a great question. Where'd that question go? Pricing, great one. So I may have missed this, but when do you introduce the pricing and have you, and how do you get past resistance of trying to, people to bat it down? Um, that, that might be a UK statement. I'm not sure what bat it down means. Is, does that mean negotiate on price? Um, so there's two parts to this. Um, you've got to be really clear about what your pricing is. And I believe, Chris, in terms, I did take a peek at your page. You're going to be in a uh, all premium, high mid-range price point. I believe that's correct. And if, if I'm off on that, just comment and, and correct me. So two things to this. One of which is, when I'm getting to the conversations about price, I want to be very clear that they are clear about the value before we're talking about price. At the same time, I don't want to BS them about the price range. So if somebody's asking, like, so what are we talking about dollars and cents? I'll say it's going to be significantly expensive and might very well be one of the most expensive things uh, that you have ever purchased. However, talking about the price of it before you understand the value of it is something I'm not willing to do. So if you want to sit down and we can go through it so you understand the value proposition, then I'd be happy to talk about price. So, but I won't just toss that out there because you're going to compare it to something that's irrelevant because you don't have the framework to understand what it actually means. So I always want to make sure that the, the price and value piece is aligned together. Now, at the higher end where we're talking with, with um, when we're talking with people where the, the dollars and cents really are secondary to the time constraint, at that stage of the game, you can just say, well, we're talking over 20K, uh, but that's not the important part. The important part is such and such. Um, and here's the key piece of this is that you've got to be really clear about the negotiation piece and, and process because the honest to good truth is the people become friends and you've got to treat everyone in that room the same because they will all find out about what has transpired and what has not transpired. So you just you've got to take a stand, for, and this is my view about it, is that this is the price. This is the price that everybody pays. Um, and if you want to be in a cheaper mastermind, then you should go look for a cheaper group. You know, there's bargains everywhere. And there's a mastermind happening over at McDonald's as we speak, I'm sure. Um, so feel free. But you've got to really hold that line clearly and not get into a bunch of song and dance about it. I hope that answered that to some degree. Um, Jason had a question. How do you effectively re-engage business relationships with others when a few months have passed and you feel like you may have forgotten about them? They feel like you may have forgotten about them. Well, so here's one of the things. And this is one of the reasons why I, I love Wine Conversations and Cash, these little mini masterminds, is that as my business has scaled, as my uh, family has grown, is that my time has become more and more valuable. And I still have people it's like, hey, could we just get together? I'd like to have a visit and all the rest. And it's like, you know what? Here's the, here's the honest about truth of it. Time is my inventory. Time is my inventory. When you ask me to have a coffee, that's the same as going into a retail store and walking out the front door with a $2,000 dress. Time's my inventory. I don't have the time to do a bunch of those sorts of things. But I do have a commitment to create value. I do have a commitment to move our relationship forward. So that's one of the reasons why I do these little mini group uh, exclusive invite uh, processes. So that's one of the ways in which I do it. I just let people know is that, you know what? I spend a third of the year out of the country. When I'm home, 
I really want to be with my dear wife and my children. We have two different ages going in two different directions for hockey. Um, and I have this thing called a life and uh, a self care routine as well. So this is the best way I can do it. So I actually use those gaps in contact as a reason for them to say yes to the WCC when I set the date. And, and people have been greatly appreciative of that. So you've got to figure out how that's going to go. Hopefully that helps as well. Okay, anything else I can answer? All good, all good. Okay, gang, I know this was a little bit longer than, uh, than we had thought, but here's the thing I want to leave you with, which is this. In 2018, I want to assist you to do two things. I want to assist you to, number one, actually do the work that is necessary to get your mastermind up and running. And if you are not already in a mastermind, I want to help you get into the right mastermind to make sure that your mastermind gets up and running. So I want to invite you tomorrow to come to um, a, I guess it's a 90 minute training. Um, and that's what Q and A and all that stuff. So you get a much more sort of interactive experience of, of me. And it is called the three ludicrous lies. Because here's the truth of the matter. It's like, we're giving you a ton of tools, you know, like this, like the manual, um, like the mastermind income calculation. We're giving you a ton of tools. But you and I both know that tools without knowing how and when and where to use the tools are useless. They're useless. It's like trying to hammer a nail with a screwdriver. It does not work. And the reality is this, is that in my life and in my business, there have been three ludicrous, ridiculous, crazy lies that I believed early on in my business career. And until I told myself the truth about carrying those lies and about how I built my life around those lies, my business struggled. And you may or may not know this, but it took me 15 years to break seven figures in sales in a year. Okay, it took me 15 years to get from I plateaued in the mid uh, six figure range and just couldn't get past it. And you know what the key to breaking free of it was? was discovering the truth about those ludicrous lies and beginning to shift my thinking, shift my way of being, shift my value contribution that exploded my business. Now masterminds were a part of that, but there was a whole bunch of other pieces. So my invitation to you is this. Tomorrow at three o'clock, I'm going to be doing a live training. It is called The Three Ludicrous Lies. And Stephen, maybe we could put that link in again just at the top. And many of you have already registered for it. I, I could see from the registration list. And uh, if you've already registered, then do yourself a favor. And for goodness sakes, show up tomorrow at three. I give you my word. Uh, these little, you know, uh, short and sweet topics, yes, they're valuable. But I'm going to go deeper tomorrow to what does it take? Who do you need to be? What do you need to do to actually apply these? Who do you need to be and what, you, what do you need to do to have your mastermind succeed? And uh, I will be there, by the way, 15 minutes early. You can ask me some Q&A questions there. I'll do everything I can to support. And I will then uh, teach for approximately an hour, and then I'll hang out to answer questions after that. And um, show up, watch it. Um, these things here are recorded on Facebook, so you can come back to them. That one is not, okay? That's a live training, and it is not done through this process, and we don't have the recording stuff set up. So get there live. It'll make a difference, I promise. So on that note, I think Stephen just put the link in at the top there in the chat window. Yes? Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Stephen, just hit return. I was going to post it on. Hmm. It's not showing up on my end in terms of the last comment. That's okay. Um, so on that note, gang, the link is down there in the, in the chat window. Make sure you come to the uh, live training tomorrow. I will see you then. And after that, of course, we'll pick up with way more training and tools. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye.